Welcome to the recap of today's creativecommons.org open source office hours. We've been hanging out on codebuddies.org. We have a lot of open source projects and initiatives here at Creative Commons. And we're specifically working on a redesign of the creativecommons.org website, which is actually multiple projects kind of wrapped into one with a more or less seamless integration. But there are some seams and we have to smooth them over. Um, but in order to make that feel seamless, we have some styles and some mockups that we're trying to apply and follow across these properties. Now, one of the things, our main website, so to speak, is powered by WordPress, and we have a publication workflow and several pages that we're um, building on the site. And WordPress is transitioning over since 2018 um, from a classic rich text editor content model to Gutenberg, which is a block-based content model, as many people I'm sure are familiar with. And we'd like to embrace this Gutenberg uh, transition as well at WordPress. In particular, we'd like to use Gutenberg as a general page builder because there's a lot of potential there. And overall, we've had good success. So without further ado, let's take a look at where I'm working today. We've got an epic that's dividing up the uh, work across multiple pages. And I'm working on the advocacy page, uh, which also is called program. And um, in any case, sorry for the naming uh, inconsistency. Here's the um, page layout we're um, trying to achieve. And what I've done today is I've decomposed it into some Gutenberg elements. I'll show you those in a moment. And the output uh, is a little bit less than stellar, <laughs> but it's a really good foundation. And I think most of the shortcomings here are relatively easy to fix. Um, pat, you know, padding issues, a little bit of a stylistic uh, accoutrements and uh, maybe some button styling. And we're also kind of flexible. We're not super strict on adhering to these, but we want to come pretty close and we want to have a nice outcome. And this, this won't pass. This is a first draft, first attempt at building it with Gutenberg's default elements, which are pretty powerful and flexible. So let's just take a quick look at the um, page. You can see it rendered here again. Uh, I've just taken a screenshot. So I uh, have that in context of the issue on GitHub. Um, so by default, WordPress posts and pages have a title. So here we go, we've got the title. And the Gutenberg editor starts here below the title. And the page elements are, there's two primary sections. There is a columns, which is a two column layout, split halfway. And the column contains a post title, which is you know page title in this case, but okay and a subheading where I was able to change the typography, the size to more closely align, and some paragraph text with a you know squiggly image to the right, just so we have consistency with the mock-up when you're comparing the mock-up to the outcome in the design. Um, it's easier to see the differences and without having a big different image there. Actually, I didn't take a picture of that. I'll have to include the, the top section picture in the uh, GitHub issue momentarily. Anyway, let's continue summarizing. So that came together fairly nicely. As you can see, it's almost you know one-to-one -one equivalence. Uh, there are some nuances. Um, this padding comes through a side effect of changing a background color. Um, on the column, when you remove the background color, the padding goes away. I, I've uh, opened an issue. I believe that is an undesirable side effect. It's kind of what would be called a kludge uh, because the page already has a white background. I don't want to need to add a background color in order to uh, have this side effect. The desirable outcome, and I think the one that uh, Gutenberg is trending towards, is having a, a configuration option here to change margin and padding. That'll be great. And it needs to also happen consistently. As you um, can see here, this is a column element changing the background it has the side effect of adding padding below we have a group which the column inherits from group uh, and we'll get to the padding in a moment the group contains a heading some paragraph text and then oops here we go another group which contains columns and one two three columns in this case and 
Well, each column contains a heading, paragraph, and a button. And I just duplicated those across there. So right, right away, we're able to kind of approximate this design with only the Gutenberg native uh, elements. Now, I say approximate because there's some clear differences. One thing is I'd like these um, column, uh, these cards more or less to have a consistent height despite the content. And there doesn't seem to be, and I stand to be corrected, a way to have the content fit the parent. Although, uh, yeah, I'm learning uh, Gutenberg. There could be a CSS class that we can uh, apply uh, to do that or something along those lines. So that was one of the inconsistencies. Uh, the button styles we have already documented. We're not super fixated on having them exactly uh, as uh, in our mockups, but it would be nice to apply our Bulma design, our Bulma elements, and we may even, even end up migrating away from Bulma, but regardless, we should have uh, the ability to style these buttons to suit our brand. Um, but that's it for the structure. It's a pretty straightforward structure. I'll just mention now this um, in the Gutenberg editor, when I select the group element, I change the background color. We can see this um, padding and there's been a rationalization of this side effect. I believe it's misguided, um, but anyway, I'm not trying to be too controversial. Um, what I'm trying to illustrate here is that when I um, look at the rendered content, I haven't really made any changes, but let's just go ahead for the sake of argument, make sure everything is up to date. The padding doesn't get added, so there's inconsistency between the Gutenberg and the WordPress styles. And again, I'm, I'm of the opinion the um, padding should be decoupled from the background color. And I also agree that the justification that um, having text and elements right up against the edge does look you know, like tacky or whatever. So you, padding is desirable, uh, but that's, you know, despite background color, it just looks bad regardless. Uh, so again, I think there's more uh, agreement than disagreement. Uh, and I think that tendency here in the Gutenberg issue tracker or the uh, direction they're going to take it hopefully is to add the configuration option for padding and margin separately and have it consistently throughout the elements. That's the other part because we have it's an inconsistent behavior here. So someone needs to be responsible for thinking holistically and auditing this. You know the community can clearly contribute to that holistic thinking through our, our troubleshooting and uh, use of the Gutenberg editor. Overall though I'm really um, impressed at you know this transition uh, to the Gutenberg um, paradigm with uh, page building capabilities it opens up. And we'll be taking this um, these findings and uh, continuing to plan our development for the uh, Creative Commons rebranding, creativecommons.org. As mentioned previously, this has been a Code Buddies Hangout where we've been working on open source for Creative Commons. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.